out. So, dear friends, thank you very much. Uh, a little bit late, uh, yeah. but uh, or, or or early defense, but we are here, and uh, I'm really happy as always to be in class uh, today. We are going to speak about the, the creation uh, in a job, where we can see the creation, and exactly what uh, we uh, we can say about the words. I must say that it's not the main idea, of course. Uh, in the book of Job that speaks about uh, justice. However, it's really important uh, to discuss about this uh, beautiful uh, uh, words that we're going to see today since it gives us um, a little bit, uh, uh, not a hidden story, but maybe a story with more details about what happened before God created the world. So we'll try to, to understand from the words here. Uh, and uh, let us start uh, since uh, uh, we are here. So let's say hello to uh, Jackie. Jackie, how are you, dear friend? Let's see that you will. Ah, now, yeah, now. How are you? Everything is okay. The storm. Dorian is not there anymore. Yeah, he's gone. Ah. Good, good riddance. Okay, so you had a good week. Yeah, a good week. Everybody here is cleaning up everything. Mm. Uh, I, I got most of it fixed back. Still one more thing to do. Uh, wow, it's, it's amazing always to hear these stories. And when you speak with someone that actually is... You can see it on live, so it's 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 amazing. Mm. Uh, of course, I uh, hope that everything is going to be fixed. And uh, thank you very much for joining. Thank you for bringing Psalms 104 to class. It's uh, really nice uh, of you. Yeah. You're more than welcome to bless us with Akasha. Okay. Ki ma'la ma'la ha'aretz et Adonai kamayim Amen. And uh, one of the first verses from Job that uh, is uh, in the speech of Job. Um, the book of Job is uh, 42 chapters with uh, three main chapters that is, is giving us the story, chapter 1 and 2 and chapter 42. And the rest are speeches. Um, of Job and his friends, and of course the answer of God to Job uh, questions about is there a justice in this world or not, and why Job suffered. One of the things that uh, Job is uh, saying in one of his speeches is this word. Uh, Jackie, can you read it, please? Hayam ani im tanin ki tasin ale. Nishmar. And uh, what we can see here, when Job is asking the question, if I'm the sea or whale that you need to watch over me, that means that the sea and the whale are watched over. There, there is a border that they cannot uh, move. There is someone needs to, 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 to keep them to see that they are okay. Um, now, this leads us to um, maybe an understanding that when, when we look at the elements that relates to sea, this means, of course, the sea as water and also the, the creatures of the sea, what we're calling the sea monsters. Um, in Genesis 1, in the first story of creation, it's written, and God um, created the great sea monsters, Hantaninim Agdoli. And this is the only creature... Uh, beside the, of course, uh, male and female, that was mentioned by names. Names and also an attribute that they are great. Now, when you move in the Bible and look at um, the word tanin, so this is one of the verses that you can see. Once you read this verse, there is maybe a, a thought that if you need to watch over the whale or the sea monster, Maybe he has done something wrong, or maybe there is a 
more uh, details to the story of creation that relates about a fight, a war, and the story of creation, of course, clean it because you can't enter to this beautiful book. I think this is what uh, so unique with a war. We can see it in other mythologies, but though that people learn these mythologies, especially the Greek one, um, they are less uh, famous, I think, from the Bible. Um, yes, Victor. Hi. Um, so these big giant uh, whales and things mm -hmm. like that, are they similar to like the Genesis 6? You know, we had the big um, people, like the um, giants. On the, yeah, giants on the earth in Genesis 6. Is it similar? It's... it's uh, it's also giant, but of course it's in in it's in uh, in the sea, not in uh, uh, okay. the land. And okay. Nephilim is uh, the giant people like Goliath or others that uh, we have. Though that Goliath is not considered Nephil, but uh, uh, as an example of someone who was really uh, giant, um, I think that the idea is that. Once you see these verses, uh, you can understand that in order to make that Bible different and in order to spread it, you can start uh, the story of the Bible with the war as in other mythologies. This is what's so unique, not just the idea of believing in one God, the, the idea of monotheism, but also that the, the, the war that we will see, we will try maybe to to understand from the verses today and also from the verses that we've seen last week and the verses that we're going to see next week it's there but it's not the main story it's not the main branch and even though that we can try to reconstruct the story or uh, uh, details of story with um, a war between uh, creatures and God we know exactly what is going to be the outcome and we know that it's less common. Uh, it's not, you know, in the main uh, stories and chapters and books of the Bible. This is something which is natural, of course. We can't know it all. So once you start uh, your journey with the Bible, when you make it clean without wars, so it's also an idea that creation eventually needs to take us to peace and not to war. Um, since Victor, you ask, so you're more than welcome also to read from, from Job 28. Go ahead. <coughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Elohim habim darka vahu yada es ma koma ki hu litot ha'aret yabit ha'at kal ha'shamayim ye'e la'asot na'hu la'ruach mishkal humayim ha'ken ba'da da'ch. So the understanding and the place of wisdom and also the idea of that God is everywhere. He can look at the end of earth and he can see under everything or heaven. And also the idea that metaphorically or maybe physically God can weight the winds and to measure the water can show us how God is everything. God is, he knows everything. He can be everywhere at the end of earth, under the heaven, under all heaven. And he can do uh, uh, everything with the elements of creation, with the wind, with the water. And that's what we're about to see also with other things. And I think uh, uh, reading this passage in Job takes us to the understanding that uh, when we speak about God, we speak about perfect. We speak about an endless. We can speak about eternity. We can speak about uh, knowledge that is uh, spread everywhere. Uh, in an interesting observation 
is to think about the internet uh, and the information that we have as something which is endless, but it's not exactly because every moment there, um, there is more information. And uh, still, even if all the people would put all their information and knowledge in the internet, through the internet, it's still not going to be close to God. Since uh, still there is a gap, even a small gap. Um, I think that uh, uh, one of the things that is written in uh, Neil Postman is a professor, I think, or doctor that relates to education. He speaks about God of technology and God of money which are the new gods of uh, the, the end of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century. And today, the god of selfie, this is a new uh, god. Um, but still, even if you have this kind of gods, metaphorically, they, they can't match or they can't be even, and even close to be even to God. So... Uh, I think in the words of good job, we're getting a perspective about what we are, where we can go, but still how far we need to go in order to reach a little bit from God and of course not everything. Um, let's see more things uh, uh, from the Job 28. Victor, thank you very much. And uh, let's ask Della to read to us. Della, how are you? Everything is good? Let's just unmute you. Was Tel Aviv to get on that plane? Put, I was yeah, on the plane. yeah, she's now in uh, uh, near to Tel Aviv. It's called the Ben Gurion Airport, and uh, she's uh, um, she's uh, she's going to to have a flight with Neria, our oldest one, to uh, Paris uh, for a few days. He's really excited, both of course. So oh, it looks a little bit, there was a small traffic there because um, Jerusalem now is a city of renovations. I don't know, you know, it's, a, it's in the Holy Land, it's a sacred place, but everywhere you go in Jerusalem, there are renovations in the roads, in the entrance. Mm -hmm. And so the traffic here is uh, something which is uh, amazing in the last few weeks. No matter where you go, you can see things that are built, but it seems that all of the city, uh, is uh, in, in this uh, process. So uh, even at night, you can see some uh, renovations here and it takes a little bit more time. I thought that I would reach here until at 8.30 p.m. and it was more close to 9 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and this is uh, for you, the verses, go ahead. Okay. Ba'asato lama tar kok. The direct lock says, Who loath Oz Raat Vaya Sapera Heki Na Degam Kaka Ra Vayomer La Adam N. I year odd. Ados na he a cock ma. Is that cock ma or cock mo? Chokma. Chokma. Kamats underneath the chet is uh, what we're calling kamats katan. Uh, so it's chokma. Oh. Okay, it's wisdom, and that's why I wasn't sure of that vowel sound. Okay, the sur mera bila bina, and thank you for pronouncing that. No problem, um, and also the rain and the lightning uh, as ways, and God, of course, created and made their ways, and the idea eventually is that. The fear of God, this is the wisdom. And when you depart from evil, this is an understanding. This is the way of life that you should have. So 
God is not giving us himself uh, as uh, the perfect one. He also gives us ways in order to become not perfect, but uh, complete, complete with our ways. Uh, in Hebrew, it's really interesting to see the word mushlam, which is perfect, and shalem, which is uh, complete. Uh, complete, of course, metaphorically in your heart and your ways and your behavior with your knowledge. Um, and I think this, uh, I, I, I spoke uh, uh, this week with my students about ideal and reality, which is maybe the, one of the tensions uh, that you can see in, in when you learn the, the, the law. But there is an ideal, for example, uh, when you speak about Shemitah, that there won't be poor people in Israel or poor people at all. But the reality is that there are poor people and then you need to, to help them to be less poor. So it's always there between what is... Uh, uh, is ideal and what is real life, the reality, and this is something which is really interesting to speak about. Um, Victor, yes, you wanted to say something. So yeah, I live near LA, Los Angeles, and we have like 60,000 homeless people and it's becoming a big problem. Does uh, Jerusalem have a big homeless population? Uh, not 60,000 for sure. Uh, um, how many people you have in, 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 in LA? Like pop total, I think it was like 10 million more, 10 million or something. Uh, uh, it's a lot, 60,000 people. Um, no, there is no, I, I won't call it a problem because this is something that uh, you will see on streets, but it's, it's numbers, I think of, uh, uh, you can't even count it. You know, it's not something that is so, uh, we have four people, unfortunately, in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem is really a poor city because of two uh, uh, populations that we can see, which is the, the Arabic and also uh, the, what we're calling Haredim, the most religious Jews, that those two societies consider to be more poor. Um, um, but uh, you won't see, you will see, I, I'm trying to think about where I saw homeless people in Jerusalem and I just can think about one or two places and it's not a lot of places. So this relates by also by uh, um, as, as um, something that you will see less in Israel. There are unfortunately many poor people, but you, you won't see them on the streets. You will see them uh, on the markets on Friday when they look for uh, the remnants of vegetables and fruits there, but still, it's something which is less uh, common to see. Um, it also relates to policy, you know, uh, uh, and uh, the state is trying to take care um, of uh, uh, homeless people. Um, uh, there is an interesting uh, story in Tel Aviv, someone that was uh, in his past, he was uh, he managed a bank and then he decided that he want to be homeless. He decided one day that he wanted to be without an ounce, uh, without money, and he's living a lot of time like this. Um, it's a matter of choice. Um, but 60,000 is really a lot of a number, which is... You know, yeah, there's so many. That, um, they say like about three homeless people die every day. Wow. Um, three die every day. That's pretty bad, you know. So bad for them. And and what the state is trying to do with it? There is uh, there are shelters that they can they're stay to, or they're mm -hmm. staying on the streets and like not sure what to do with them. There's so many tents on the streets in downtown wow. San Francisco and LA. Um, yeah, there's just no place for them to live. So they're trying to build more uh, affordable housing, but you know, there's just not that much space anymore. And it's, you know, like you said, renovation, trying to build more things, but they just live on the streets and they're like in the public street, but they don't really want them in the public areas. So mm -hmm. something like that. I mean, reading the LA Times. So. Okay, first of all, thank you very much for sharing this important information. Uh, and um, 
you know, as we said, uh, ideal and reality, and this is uh, maybe a little bit extreme, I must say, a example of uh, how reality uh, is uh, horrible. Um, and uh, I don't know if it relates to policy of uh, the state or the policy of the states, uh, the federal, but it's, um, uh, of course, uh, this is something uh, that uh, I'm just thinking, um, which is uh, terrible to hear about uh, these people. And, and also, they're mm -hmm. spreading like um, disease because there's a lot of rats in the encampments. Mm -hmm. Like rats, sure. in front of them, they spread like, they're saying like, it's getting to be like the plague, like they had many, many hundreds of years ago, like the plague is being spread because yeah. from the rats that are living in the, in the tents and stuff. It's pretty gross. <laughs> yeah, anyways. And, uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for sharing, dear friend. And uh, let's see, uh, just one, uh, uh, another uh, uh, passage from Job, Job 38 which is uh, the answer of God to Job about his uh, thoughts, about his arguments, about the injustice that he's suffering. And uh, Claire, how are you, dear friend? Everything is good? Uh, Ken, everything is good. A um, little tired tonight, but that's okay. It's, uh, it's, I love this time of year. I learned in my modern Hebrew class, it's called Stav. And um, anyway... So things are good. We don't have any hurricanes here and tornadoes. Um, I think Oregon is uh, the sweet, one of the sweet spots on planet Earth weather-wise. We live in a really uh, temperate zone. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and um, yeah, when I was in Jerusalem, uh, there's a place in the old city uh, where you walk up the stairs near the, uh, I think it's near the two lions and um, um, and you can have a really nice view of the wall but one of the days that I was there um, in May um, there was a group of people that they were asking for you know donations mm -hmm. and um, one guy came up to me and he, he tied a, a red string around my wrist <laughs> and uh, I think I met him the year before too. And he kept saying uh, for more children. And I'm like, I didn't want to pop his bubble, but you know, that ship has sailed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, my daughter's 21. so I must not look as old as I am. Or at least <laughs> he goes, then for your husband. I'm like, um, well, thank you. <laughs> I just said, thank you. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So enough about me. And, um, just looking forward to, I'm really glad that we're back in to class. It seems like even when we miss one week or two, that it seems like it's such a long time, but. I agree. Keeps For me to, to, to miss, to miss a class, it's, uh, you know, it's, even though it's from, from good uh, uh, thoughts and good things that happens, but still it's something, you know, I, I it's, I mean, it's part of my life. I can't, you know, uh, Something that uh, I'm always thinking about my life without Thursday, Thursday evening and Friday morning. And I can uh, say to myself, no, I can't live like this, you know. Oh, yeah. um, okay, these verses are yours, dear friend. Go ahead. Ta-da. Okay. Vaya'an Adonai et Yov min has ara vayomar mize machshi Machik et etza vermilin bli daat. Is a, I gotta remove the pictures here. Just a moment. Okay. Oh, where was I here? Ezar, Ezarna kagever hala sikha. The esh alcha the hodi eni. Efo Hayata Bayasti Aretz Hagaid Im Yadata Bina. Then, first of all, uh, 
the, 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 the answer of God is to speak about, uh, to say words without knowledge, to, to make a, a, a dark counsel and to ask Job, where have you been when I created the world? Where you, you where you've been when, do you have an understanding? Do you think that you really know and, and understand the world that I created and the way, the way that I'm uh, um, ruling over this world. This is maybe uh, one of the million dollar questions. What are the ways of God? And I think it's even more than million dollar questions. It's even a billion or a trillion um, or even some of the ways of God. But uh, I, I think that maybe this is the adventure that we have here on our journey that we, we, from one hand, we understand that we can't know everything. From, from the other hand, there is a tension between to say, okay, I don't want to know. And the idea that, no, I want to know as much as I can. And uh, uh, yeah, Claire, you want to say something? Talking, it just reminded me that there's a, another scripture that says, um, um, that great are the works of the Lord and they are discovered by those that love them. And it's like, to, you know, and yet here he is, I, I believe in this case, he was wanting to, to give Job um, understanding that I'm, I founded all this and you can't like put me in a box, you know, you, you can't say I'm this way or that way really. Cause but I, I did all this, you know, we, and there's no way we could totally understand that, but it's, it's like, you know, Genesis where he walked with Adam in the cool of the evening and brought him animals. God, he took what he made. And even though Adam was made, he still wanted to show him these things. He wanted to share it with them. And Psalm nine, where it says that what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou carest for him. You know, it's just like amazing to me that, you know, he, although in this context, um, you know, it's, he's correcting him, but it's still amazing that uh, he who created us and created all these things wants us to know that these things and wants us to know him. So that was my comment. Thank you. Victor, you wanted to say something? Yeah, um, I noticed that God is talking to um, Job a lot. You know, here in 38, chapter, he, he talks to him a lot. Does he talk to Job more than anybody else in the Bible? Like more than Adam? Does he talk to, he's talking, you know, talking to a human being more than Moses? Uh, if, you, if you count the number of verses, I think that Moses is getting the most numbers, I think. Uh, because there are many commandments that Moses needs to give to the people of Israel. And some claim, by the way, that there is an interpretation. I don't understand why, but it uh, it's appears in... in, in uh, just one moment. There is a, a story that uh, Job may be Abraham or Job may be Moses. And though that Abraham, we can understand there are connections, but with Moses not, less. Um, uh, uh, but I think it's not about the number of verses, it's exactly what God is saying. And with Job, since the book is, speaks about justice, or some would say injustice, uh, the, the, the tension here is different and, and the word gets a different understanding because you can you can speak about uh, uh, time and numbers and say okay with Moses he spoke more, but the, I think maybe one of the questions here is what God is saying and God is trying to give Job an answer that you know know your place you can't understand everything, and if you can't understand everything, you need to understand that there is only one that knows everything and this is me, um, and. Thank you very much, of course. Uh, uh, Clancy, how are you, dear friend? I'm, I'm well, good. You had a good Happy week. Happy to be here. I have, thank you. Yes. 
Excellent, my friend. Thank you very much for joining and uh, you're more than welcome to read to us. Bevakasha. Okay. Misam Meimadeha Ki Tada O Mi O Mi Nata Ala Ale Ha Ale Ka I cannot get it right. Aleha Kav Alma Adaneha Hat Ba Bau O Mayara Even Pinat Pinata Beral Beran Ya Kab Coke Coke Ve Boker Vai Vayar E U Cole Bene Elohim Elohim Vaya Sek Bid Bilah Hayim Yam Be Beyo Ko Mere Hen Yetz Yetz Just one moment, dear friends. I think that one of the kids is waking hey. up, so just a moment. Ah, uh, little voices. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Even when my daughter was little, if I wasn't there, it it creates an unrest in her, and she would, you know, all of a sudden she's like, "Where's my mom? Mom? Mom?" <laughs> in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, my baby's 21 now, and she's a senior at the University of Oregon. Okay, I'm here. Um, so, uh, as uh, Clancy just read, just one moment, okay. Um, we can see that the questions continues, and of course it's for Job that, do you know the measures, and then you know the lines that I put, and the uh, the foundations and uh, the sons of God, of course, the angels that uh, cheering up and shout every morning. And also the idea that God made uh, 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 a kind of a border to uh, 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 the doors, to the sea of scores with doors. Uh, of course, the idea that if God is putting a border means that the sea or the water cannot control over the world. And this is maybe, as you said, the remnant of mythology that there was a war. Um, let's see more from this and uh, see where is Rod. Hey, Rod, how are you? Everything is good. Not too bad, except we could do with the mind. Okay. You're feeling okay? You can smell the smoke from the bushfires. But that's just part of being in Australia. It's the dry climate. Well, this is a particularly interesting uh, scripture, this, because of the necessity of water on the planet. Mm -hmm. Asumi Anan le the Vesho wa a ra shel hat la ho tato wa ash vo alal keki. Wa ashim 
אסין בריח ודלתיים. ואומר עד פה תבוא ולא תוסיף ופוישית בגאון גדול אחר. What we can see here, which is really interesting, is that one more time, there is uh, a bars and doors, of course, for the sea. The cloud is actually, uh, uh, of course, bring the water with the rain. But still, there is a border. You can come until here, and that's it. You can't go further. Um, and when God is saying this to Job, he speaks not just about the border that a man As that he can't understand everything, but also the water that cannot fight with God. And God is putting even some bars and doors so the water would have its place. This leads us to an understanding maybe that there was a war when God created or before God created the war. But it's still, it's not the main story. And for that reason, it's not told in the first story of creation. Um, I hope that uh, now uh, everyone can hear. And uh, let's see more. Um, and coming back to dear Jackie that would read to us from Job 40, uh, which is uh, when Job is speaking back. And let's see what he says back about the power of God. Okay. Timshok, Li Yatav. בחקה וחבל השקיעה לשונו. הטסים אגמון באפו ובכוח יקוב לחיו. הירבה עליך תחנונים אם ידבר אליך רחות. היכרות ברית ומח. תקחנו לעבד עולם. And this is the power of God that one more time, as in Psalms 104, he played with the way. Now he's, he's drawing him and uh, he's uh, <coughs> taking his tongue and uh, with rope, uh, with a cord, let it down and uh, hurts his nose and his, uh, with a thorn uh, is also his, uh, his jaw. And this can show us a kind of a, a story about what happened in the fight. Uh, but still, uh, this is uh, just uh, a little bit. Yes, uh, Victor, you wanted to say something? Let me just uh, unmute you. Okay. Okay. Now. He is talking about Leviathan, the huge beast in the sea, or the huge fish in the sea. And then like the book of Revelation in the New Testament talks about a beast, I think out of the earth and the beast out of the sea. Do you think the beast is like the Leviathan in the sea? Do you think that there might be a connection? I think that uh, there are sea monsters and also elements of creatures that were big and uh, that there was a kind of a fighting with them that is not told in the first story of creation. And what we can see in Job and Psalms and also in Isaiah, it's the remnants of this kind of story. It uh, reminds me more uh, the movies now that we have from Hollywood. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name. Dog, dog. It's really similar. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Rod, you also raised your hand? Yes, we don't keep crocodiles as pets in Australia. We've got plenty of them. 
but occasionally they eat tourists. So Leviathan could well be something that came from prior times because the, the old croc's been around for quite a while and he definitely doesn't become your servant. Hmm. Okay, thank you, my friend. Uh, Claire, you also raise your hand? I think I just forgot to um, lower it. Ah. Oh, ah, okay. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, when we continue to read, Haset Atesachek Bo Katsipor Vetikshirenu Lenaarotecha, Yichu Alav Chabarim, Yechetsu Uben Kenaanim, Atemale Besukot, Oro Vetzilzal, Dagim Rosho, Sima Lav Kapecha, Zechor Milchama Altosa. Now remember that there was a battle, remember that there was a war, but do no more. And if you need to remember, Maybe this is one of the things that still we need to, to see when we speak about the creation. Now, why the story of creation, the first story of creation is clean? I think that this is an ideology to say it's not as the other mythologies. And this is something which is uh, really important to the Bible start. It's not just the idea of monotheism, it's also the idea that God created without a war. But those verses that we can see from Job and we've seen from Psalms and we will see in Isaiah gives us another aspect, I think more details of what happened before God created. But you know that in, as something works in, in, in natural, when you start to read a story and you have the main stream and you have the main tree, so even if there are different branches, still you're, you're, you're walking and you're moving the journey with this main tree or mainstream. And we need to remember this. So for one hand, for me, it's really important to say, okay, look at other places. But from the other hand, we started. And this is the first story of creation, a really unique one um, with the things, patterns that are the same in every day is, uh, has the exceptional from the patterns. But... Uh, still, when we take the first, uh, the second verse, when the Spirit of God is upon water, this is maybe the idea that eventually, if there was or no, uh, there was no war, uh, uh, still we can see how God is ruling over the world without any problem. And uh, this is something that we need to remember. Um, your friends, uh, yeah, Victor? You want to say something? Yeah. Is this similar to Isaiah 11 when it says the children will um, take care of the animals like the lion cubs and the calves and stuff and wolves and sheep will live together in peace? This is eventually what is uh, how it should be that the end of the world would be as the beginning of the world. Uh, we're going to speak about Isaiah next week so I will be able to give you an answers from the scriptures and also Isaiah 11 should be there. Um, in any case, uh, dear friends, first of all, thank you very much for waiting. Uh, and this is, of course, something that uh, only for today. Next week is going to be, as usual, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I would like to tell you all uh, Shabbat Shalom from Israel. Uh, many thanks for joining. As always, it's been a pleasure to be here. And uh, I want to wish you all... Uh, 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 very nice weekend, and let's uh, pray that everything is going to be okay. Next week is going to be after the elections in Israel one more time. So let's see what uh, the results are going to be. Thank you very, very much, and uh, Shabbat Shalom from Israel, as uh -huh. always.